Welcome everybody to Chaps Mini Cultures episode 161. Happy International Women's Day. There I said it. I didn't mean to say it because is that necessary to say that? Do we have to have an International Women's Day? And why are there two middle-aged guys talking about Women's Day? You'll find out. Stay tuned. It was almost like someone wound up the, <laughs> the, the, the show tune. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Welcome. Chaps Many Cultures. Yeah. So are you a woman? If so, let us know. Are you not a woman? Also let us know. Are you a gender that is in flux and you want to talk about that? Let us know that as well. And let us know specifically where in the world you're watching this right now, whether you're watching it live or the recording. We're recording this on March 8, which is the International Women's Day. Women's Day, I believe. Women apostrophe S day. And what I said in the intro is, why do we need that day? I wonder why we need that day. Um, I also wonder why we need African American History Month. And I wonder why we need any day to actually um, focus our intention on something that isn't right or hasn't been completely dealt with. In this case, meaning equal rights, equity, justice, opportunity, pay for women in the world. So why do we need that day still, Brett? Oh, absolutely. It's also uh, Women's History Month. Women's History Month this month by the way so that's another thing laid on the top and right. dare we take away the privilege of people that look like us you know that don't get our own special day because you know we every day is special for us <laughs> and that and i think that that's the point is that um we are not taking it nothing yet nothing none of this takes away from anything um that we have the privilege that we have had but it is worth of course everybody it at, at least even at the start of their life comes across a woman that it means the world to them and uh and of course as we go through life we navigate the world with women around us including uh us two guys who raise by raising women also married to women um and we understand the importance of women in our lives um just as much as anybody else so i think it's worth celebrating it is because there has been a lot of inequality. I mean, the whole, even in my history, even my upbringing, there was embedded coded, uh, you know, messaging that said somehow I was superior to women. Women, <laughs> you know, it was just a, a, a typical kind of embedded uh, experience. So, um, and and I think even to this day, me personally, just giving it up uh, is. Even a couple of years ago, I've had the experience where, quite rightly, quite right, rightly, I was called out along with other people for exercising a certain amount of privilege in a certain situation, and and you just, it's just so hard. It's not well, it shouldn't be hard, but it is. It shouldn't be hard to recognise it, but it is difficult when it's so embedded in you that it just comes out naturally like that, and those kind of things scare the hell out of us. So I think yeah. these. These celebrations, and they are celebrations. They're not, you know, they're, 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 they are just true remembrances and celebrations of the people, the women that we the, that we love and love us and nurture us and and also lead us. Right, that's the important thing. They also lead us, and uh, and and we can look up to them. So you know, I think now, any we only spotlight celebrate them right. on this one specific day, or I mean, mm. I, I I take a, as you noticed, I, I take a little bit of a a controversial opinion on this um, yeah. women's history month um, as if women only made history worth for one month. Um, right. Isn't that something we would like to consider throughout the year? Um, I'm, I'm curious, right? And, mm -hmm. and as long, as long as we are, and I'm, 
I wouldn't call myself a feminist, even though I'm surrounded by by women in my home. However, I'm, I'm I'm I still think that as long as we have to put labels on it in order to uh, shine light on on a process that is still ongoing, in this case, uh, creating equal opportunity, equal rights, equal pay, equal everything for women. As long as we're as long as we're putting labels on it, it gives those of us, in this case, men, who often whether they want it or not, benefit from the inequality, it gives us an easy way out, right? So, oh, yeah, we're doing this, right? So we're, we're showing mm -hmm. how how aware we are of the issue. Uh, so I'm, like, I'm not quite on board with that. I do get the celebration part, and I'm all for that. And I am voting for more celebrations than just one day. Yeah. And I am voting for acknowledgement of women's achievements for more than a day. And I vote for, dare I say it, equal pay. Yeah, definitely. So you're doing the same job, and you're not getting paid the same, something's not right. Yeah. No, you're right. And well, it seems unbelievable that we can come home to our families for those that are that are married to women you know that you come home to the and raise them that you come home to a family and put your arms around and 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 love these people and still exercise a privilege and participate in a system that diminishes the equality of women in that society right so yeah. through no through pay or through turning a blind eye when, you know, these these snide little jokes. We've all been there, right? We've even had certain leaders call it, it's just okay because it's locker room talk. It just goes out. Okay, well, fine, that's good. But at least, you know, there, there's a point at which, I don't know, how can you, you know, and I'm again, I'm as guilty of this as, any, as anybody. So I'm just saying that it, it is difficult then to come home and put your arms around people you yeah. love that, that, that do not have the access or that you're perpetuating the system where they're precluded from having access to it. That's the difficult yep. part I kind of struggle with, right? I, I agree with you. And um, locker room talk, yes. Um, it's a great topic. <laughs> right. Isn't that um, a good topic? <laughs> I, I've been to these locker rooms and yeah, yeah. I know how easy it is, especially for men to fall prey to that peer pressure of, either going along with that kind of locker room talk or being othered and ostracized for um, taking a different point of view. I've been, I've been in that position as well. Um, and I learned something fairly early on in my adult manhood when I was encouraged to be quote unquote brave to wear, but by women actually, by the women in my life to wear clothes that in my culture would not be deemed as masculine. So I showed up in colors that a lot of men in my circles would make fun of. Or I even, I, I remember it I was encouraged once by friends, family friends that were from, from Southeast Asia to wear a sari, a Indonesian traditional skirt looking piece of cloth that you wrap around your waist and is very airy and super for hot climates. And it looked like I was wearing a skirt and I did that in public. Um, and it was, it was interesting to hear the comments and it was also liberating for me to um, not be negatively or affected in any way by it. And I said, well, only like uh, um, real men do wear pink, right? Or I am no less a man if I am showing up this way and it challenges your view of manhood. So I'm doing something that is against that locker room identity or that locker room perception of masculinity. And there we are again, or I am at least, um, talking about a sense of wrong masculinity on a day that I but wanted to talk about women. So, yeah. but one begets the other, right? So this, this uh, women are at a disadvantage wherever men create systems that perpetuate their ideas of manhood. And 
I think one piece for us, for, for men like us, men of a certain age, or fathers of daughters, fathers in general, husbands of women, um, one way to break down these systems of inequality is to not participate in it. And that's a choice you can make as an individual. There's nobody telling you to do this, right? There's nobody making you do that. Hmm. Yep. That's at least how I look at it. Absolutely. So let's let's agree that there is still a very deep societal system that uh, does not allow access to certain places, rights, equality, and they're different for different countries. I guess we've got some we've got some images that we might want to bring up here. We prepare. Yeah, to prepare these I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan. Actually, I, I would invite you if, if if data and statistics is something that you're interested in. There is a service called, and let me remove that banner here on the bottom here. There's a service called Statista. Let's let's name them. Statista.com, mm. I believe. Um, and they make lots of infographics and you can get on their newsletter. It's for free. And um, if you want to show their stuff in public like we're doing, we're wanting, we want to name the source. And they published this, not today. They published this about, I don't know, a couple of days ago. Only mm -hmm. 10 countries have full equal rights for women. And in the article that goes along with this infographic, it explains what it means by equal rights. So there's 10 countries. Um, my home country is not among the top 10. My host country that I'm currently residing in is not among the top 10. I believe your home country is not among the top 10 either, or is it? It's no. not even on the list, but I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sure it is on the list. It didn't make yeah. it on this. Image. Yeah, so, so this is a range of, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. here you see many of the Nordic um, countries are part of those who have equal rights. I think Iceland being among them was one of the, if not the first country that passed a law that made it illegal to pay women less than men for the same job. Uh, so we have Iceland, Sweden, Latvia, Denmark. So these are the um, the Nordic countries. And I want to say Nordic cultures to a certain degree as well, because these are cultures that are often fairly egalitarian and with a, with a moderate degree of collectivism. Um, so the, the, those cultural values may play into that. We also see countries like Belgium and France, Luxembourg, mm -hmm. and uh, even what some would call Mediterranean cultures, even though Portugal is not in the Mediterranean, but on the Atlantic, but Portugal being a, 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 a Latin, Latin X culture, so to say, um, among those countries that provide equal rights, a country that if I had guessed and polled the audience here, probably none of us would have guessed that Portugal would have made it among oh. those top 10, right? So it, it's, a, it's a wide variety and it's not simply culture that leads certain countries to create frameworks that eliminate the inequality between the genders. It may also be political will, right? And if you look at countries like Canada, Portugal and Ireland that fall into this top 10 bracket, those, those would be kind of the outliers to the, the cultural assumptions that many of us might have. And mm -hmm. it is also a good reminder for, I mean, I come from Germany, right? My country is up there, but not a hundred percent. Neither is the UK and look at the U S they barely crossed the 90 percentile um, magic marker. Um, and maybe surprisingly to many of you, Saudi Arabia is ranking higher than Malaysia or India or China on that. I'm sure there are some stereotypes or some assumptions that would have believed otherwise. I think mm -hmm. it's important that for me, the message is only 10 out of 190 something countries around the world grant full equal rights for women. And that might be one of the explanations why we still need an International Women's Day or a Women's History Month, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's an indictment, really, um, but it's 2021, right? <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. That, that's very, that, that is surprising, those statistics, just 10 countries um, out, out of the, uh, out of what we call a, civil, a civilized world, right? Um, 
And, and I, I, I find it also interesting that among those top 10 are no cultures, at least not to my knowledge, that could easily be described as matriarchal. Uh, there are only a few matriarchal societies that I could think of right now. Um, but I'm not sure if any of these here are ma matriarchal in, in a classical sense. Maybe Latvia is a little bit more. I don't know. I know that Jewish culture is very much um, matriarchal in the sense that your Jewishness is passed on through the maternal lineage, right? If you have a Jewish father and a mm. uh, non-Jewish mother, that doesn't automatically make you Jewish. However, if you have you if you have a Jewish mom, then it does. Um, some um, South American indigenous societies are still matriarchal to this day. Some Sub-Saharan African cultures still are. I don't see them here in that list, which obviously doesn't only include the behavioral, the cultural behavioral parts of it, but also the legal frameworks of the countries to which these cultures belong, right? Yeah. Uh, we have uh, another infographic from the same source, countries with the most women in national parliament, and they're looking at the lower house, right? If they're uh, uh, bicameral systems. So you see here, Rhonda being number one, and I think there might be a historical explanation for that, given the genocide that swept this nation in our lifetime, which was horrible and probably killed more, more men in leadership positions than we might be aware of, and that would lead to more female decision-making. Who knows? It may have to do with the fact that Rwandan society is more matriarchal than I'm personally aware of, right? Um, the Emirates, who would have thunk? I would yeah. have not, certainly. Right? No. Look at where we are here in the US. Barely a quarter, a little bit more than a quarter of members of parliament, and this is as of January this year, right? So when the new when the new House and the new Senate um, was sworn in, less than a third of the women, uh, of the parliamentarians in, in the House and the U.S. are women. So there's still a lot to do. Yeah, representation. That's that's a that that is that to that continues in this country. In this country, the U.S. We are in the U.S. Christian and I. Um, that that is the country that uh, it has that kind of low uh, participation rate or, or access. You know, let's call it access. I think it is a restrictive uh, system here. Um, and, um, you know, for many, you know, there's cultural reasons, there's also social reasons and economic reasons and things like that and historical, but um, it is surprising. And uh, I, I think if you look at uh, the rest of the world in terms of, you um, of those, uh, some of those countries that are really surprising, you know, like the Arab Emirates. But um, I think if uh, if you do a little bit of, if if you know anybody in these cultures, if you actually engage with these cultures, I think the the women are an integral part of the decision making. But you know, on the outside, the the, the what we, the bias that we bring when we don't know and participate um, in those societies comes into play. So we just assume that it's not um, so. Um, well, I think it behooves all of us, no matter whether we are from a society or a culture that gives equal rights to women more than others. It doesn't really matter if, if you're from a, a, a machismo culture or a egalitarian feminist culture. I think it behooves all of us men to, to do our homework right, to, to, to do our research and look at those case studies and look at the data um, when women are participating in leadership, in decision-making, in all sorts of fields in our society, how the results are affected. There is plenty of proof that in, in global diplomatic circles, if women are on, at the negotiation table, negotiations are concluded faster and in a more amicable, less confrontational way. There, we have the data. It, it, it's, not, it's not like this is a secret. Mm. Um, we see that um, systems, structures, nations that are led by females or have a strong female accent in their leadership 
have um, less volatility. We see countries like currently Finland or New Zealand or Taiwan with female leadership that are navigating crises in a, in a more measured way. Are they doing better across the board on all the metrics? I don't know that. However, we certainly know that they are navigating the crisis much better. Mm -hmm. And I think New Zealand has been one of those outlier countries where um, the prime minister's decisive action and a female decision-making process has led to, I would say, a success story in curtailing uh, the COVID pandemic, right? Yeah, no, she'd be, she's an envy of uh, pretty much a lot of the, the the world when it comes to the way that um, that she took the leadership, and um, and and not just herself. She didn't stand out there and say, "This is me." I think she continues to do this uh, at her, and she just she just basically puts herself out there. She is she is leading a group of very very. Um, it's a it's a it's a culture that comes together in a lot of ways. Um, it, when when uh, confronted with threat um it is it is it has a lot of uh a lot of even the native cultures uh bring that to the table there um so i think that she's leveraging basically the the mindset of her country very well right there i think that's a good leader is to leverage the mindset understand the people speak to them on their level um in a in a wider sense does everybody mm. agree with her absolutely not you know mm. and uh and and I'm sure that she'd be the first person to listen uh, to the people that, that don't agree with her. That's that's for sure. So, yeah. So obviously, this is a international topic. That's why it's called International Women's Day and not American Women's Day or not the Brett and Christian Women's Day. Um, Do we so, have our own? <laughs> well, I have. There are three women in my home, so I, I could say. The the women that tolerate Christian, day. <laughs> yeah, the women they tolerate, the women that tolerate us though. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I I know that once in a while they they need to muster a lot of grace and tolerance for my <laughs> misguided actions and and yeah, I, I'm I'm aware of it. I'm I'm painfully aware of it. So well, what what can we do as men in a in a system that is dominated by our gender, what 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 can an individual do, regardless of your location on the planet? What can you do to foster hmm. female equality, women's equality? Any ideas, Brett? Well, you know, I think it, it, there's a there's a pretty basic answer, and I mean, I know we we kind of assume the this knowledge because we do culture for a living. So I always bring it back to culture in terms of the way we approach cultural differences. All right. Understanding yourself, right? We well, you always say this. This is what understanding your biases, recognizing your biases, understanding where you could possibly learn, and and what values have do you remember that of your of your upbringing may be contributing to and perpetuating systems around you. It could start with your family. It could start with the business. Um, it could start with the society around you. I think that's that's the key. But there's also plenty of people. There's plenty of women around that you can you can listen to. And you don't uh, you know we're not asking them you know don't go to them and say how can we you know don't come and solve the problem for us. That's not what we're asking. We're saying watch you know listen learn um, look for role models that uh, that you can learn from as women. Right. But, um, that I think that's uh, one way to do it. Um, and I, because I remember even back in my early career working for a woman who, who was just, who was really, I mean, it was such a shock that she got this role and yet her, she was hugely successful. And I always remember looking back at that and thinking, I probably didn't learn enough from her, right? Mm -hmm. I there was probably, probably a lot of more I could have learned, right? But there's even people if even if they're working, say for you, right? If you're, if if they're, they're subordinates of you, you know, what can you learn from them? Be humble, right? right? Humility. Right. What do we say about culture? Humor. Come to it with humility. Come to it uh, really curious, with curiosity and wanting to learn. Um, and then and then exercise and try, you know, try different things. You're always you're going to make mistakes. 
willing to if you're willing to own it and understand that this is part of the learning process. So there's a couple of things I've thrown in there. They're just my personal opinions. It's what I try and do every day. Do I always get it right? No, I don't. I've got women who have to put up with me too, and you know, so you know that's just part of the part of the deal. But um, you know, we're we're anyway. The, just, the slogan this year for International Women's Day is "Choose to Challenge." Yeah. So and that, that's also the hashtag. I'm not sure if we used it properly. Um, however. Choosing to challenge, what does that mean for me? For or what does it mean for you? I'm going to ask you first. What, what does it mean to if you choose to challenge? What are we challenging? I think the structure, the the the, the structural inequities. Right, you're challenging the structural inequities. You're asking why. Why is it that we don't pay women the same amount of money? Why is it we don't give them unfettered access to any opportunities that they are willing and want to put their mind to? Mm -hmm. that's that's a start um and to challenge yourself right look at yourself in the mirror choose to challenge yourself and and ask what you can do better that's maybe another thing um i think it's a good i think it's a good hashtag <laughs> you know there's a lot of there's a lot of meat on that bone right you can really you know yeah and i would i would invite you to um go here internationalwomensday.com that's a yeah. start Super generic, you might think, and yet um, a website chock full of resources and idea sparkers. So what what could you do? How could you go about this? Not just today. How right. can you challenge the status quo on your team? How can you challenge the way you interact with each other in your organization? And how can you keep in mind that there's work to be done around this. How can you, what can you do to make sure that the female voices in your world, in your organization are heard, that the female accomplishments are seen and that the female accomplishments are recognized in a way that it resonates with the women. And I'm, I'm saying this specifically in this way because I came across a picture on social media today um, as I went through my Instagram, there's this young, young conservative politician in Germany. He's, I don't know, maybe a 30 ish, not quite sure how old he is. And he, he made a name for himself as one of those young, non, young neocons in Germany who's got new ideas and new approaches to a conservative political agenda. And he posted a picture of himself today on International Women's Day with a smirk and a bouquet full of red roses. And the backlash to that was just delicious because mm -hmm. it was like, oh, so it's um, great job opportunities for you and a red rose for the lady. Oh, how equitable you are, dear sir. <laughs> so it... If we're going to look at this day like that, that you think this is your, uh, what's it called? Your, your what's, what's the word in the paradise? Adam and Eve covered their private parts with what leaf? With a. Oh, the fig leaf. The fig leaf, right? If, if, if it's just a fig leaf of your uh, misogynist um, preferences, then. Yeah, that's not gonna cut it, people. No, no. Dear, dear male friends, that's not it. No. Keep the red roses for your loved ones on any occasion you feel it's appropriate. It has no place in this context. Yeah. Women, women carry a heavy load. They brought us into this world, and they do the work that too many of us men don't recognize. They do the stuff that you might feel you're too good for. I know this because I catch myself once in a while being guilty of that as well. So let's let's be better than that. Absolutely. Be better, do better. And what is that saying? I never remember it. Is it great women, you know, may we raise them? May we, <laughs> I don't know, what, what is that? Uh, may we, and I think, well, the women say, may we be them, you know, and that kind of thing, mm. and may we be graced with their presence. I know, there's plenty, plenty of things that we could put that to. 
but we are certainly surrounded by many many people that uh, are women or identify as women and the world is full of these wonderful souls and uh and you know jay, jay you you had a resource you wanted to share with our audience as well right uh, we do. We do have a link. Some, some. Our, in our in this work, of course, we have partners, and we've got um, a worksheet was put together by Perrin Global, who um, are just and the, you know, you asked before, what do we do? Um, this is basically a real, a kind of nice short fact sheet um, in a uh, graphic type of uh, um, term. Feel free to download that if that's something that you might be able to learn from. We can um, we can put the link in the in the comments here. Um, I will in a second. Can I've got. I got. I just put it up there. So. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. Great. Um, so yeah, just uh, just go ahead. Um, you can download that. It's free. It was given. It just came up today on my uh, on on my uh, on our what you know the interwebs. <laughs> yeah, uh, the thing that pings right. The, yeah, that that thing. You know, makes like, these beautiful you know, images on on this thing that we're looking at right now. This, okay. this new fangle thing. You know. <laughs> On my, on my on my blackberry <laughs> oh uh, uh, and on my palm pilot too <laughs> palm pilot. <laughs> oh, i gotta i gotta um grease my walker now and and, and <laughs> ho hover over to the love seat all right um mm -hmm. uh, being facetious folks international women's day respect 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 to all the women out there who are cranking it who are making sure the trains are on time and people are fed and inventions are made. And I want to be super topical and timely with this. One of the vaccines that many people are being inoculated with right now was developed by a husband and wife team. And I think it's, I don't want to diminish the work that the husband did, but the, the wife, the woman of that team arguably is the one leading the charge. And that's the, the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine that's been distributed throughout the world. Mm -hmm. a, a husband and wife team, immigrants to Germany from Turkey. Um, beautiful success story. If I, I'd be surprised if they were not on the shortlist for a Nobel Prize this year. Um, respect the women and what they do. There's there's so much unrecognized accomplishment. There's so much unrecognized work. Let's 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 collectively open our eyes to that. Yep. And again, not just today, but all year. Excellent. Minus the roses. Minus the roses. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, good to see you. And we'll be back tomorrow with another episode. This has been Two Chaps, Many Cultures. Uh, please share, uh, comment, and uh, confront. If you may, if you feel the need to, but we'll be back to again tomorrow with a guest, very special guest, a very worldly guest, in fact, um, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, it'll be three chaps tomorrow. So. <laughs> and I'll be the youngest. Yay! Well, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> good for you, Sonny. Oh, All right. right. Thank you you have a wonderful everybody. rest of your Monday. Or maybe Tuesday, if that's already the case in your world. Yeah. And we will oh, see. Actually, it is. it is Tuesday for someone. Look. Ah, Jason Perry. I think I've heard that name before. He yeah. might be related to you. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. We, we know we we know one one woman that we share pretty closely, you know? Mm. <laughs> so that's his brother, if you haven't caught up on it. All right. Okay, good. So Mrs. Perry, wherever in the world you are, whether you're listening or not, thank you for bringing this chap into the world and raising him as hard as it must have been. However, I, I acknowledge your hard work that it took to bring this guy here. All right. Yeah, I was so broken. She had to put it, you had to try again. I don't, did it work out best the second time? We'll, I don't know. We'll be the, we have to be the judge of that. <laughs> All right. See you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.